Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and welcome back to Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch, I'm gonna tell you about all the best stuff Netflix is adding in January 2024. That's right, it's the start of a new year, which is where Netflix typically adds a lot of stuff, and January 2024 is no exception. If you're new to these videos, welcome, but what we typically do is go through all the stuff they're adding on the first of the month, it's gonna be a lot of the movies you've heard of before, but then we go through the monthly chronological order talking about all the brand new releases. Then we'll close out the video with a list of everything leaving in the month of January, so you can be sure to catch those titles before they're gone. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode, but let's go ahead and get into January 1st where they're adding a bunch of stuff. Some of my top picks include the entire John Wick trilogy. This includes the original trilogy, not the recently released John Wick 4, but Netflix does have a habit of releasing a big surprise movie towards the end of the month. Who knows, maybe we'll get John Wick 4 in a few weeks. They're also gonna be adding the original Jurassic Park trilogy. I just recently introduced my eight-year-old son to these. He absolutely loves them, but he and I both agree the first one is still the best by far. Quentin Tarantino's third movie comes to Netflix and it's easily one of his most underrated, Jackie Brown. It's also one of his slowest burns, and he does have quite a few slow burns in his filmography, but this is just top-notch filmmaking, amazing performances, a really cool story that's loosely based on reality, and just insanely rich character development. I love all of the characters in this movie, even the ones that aren't very lovable. Again, just top-notch filmmaking, easily one of the best movies added to the platform this month. I could say the same thing about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, one I have not seen in years, but again, top-notch stuff and it's been so long since i've seen this one you can guarantee i'll be watching it sometime in january another top-notch flick is gravity i know some of the stuff in this movie is pretty far-fetched but my goodness is this a stunning movie to watch especially if you've got a nice big high-def tv this movie just looks absolutely incredible from start to finish they're also going to be adding zack snyder's first film and still in my opinion one of his best dawn of the dead not only is it one of his best, but it's also one of the best zombie remakes ever made. It's got that vibrant, electric Zack Snyder style, but it's still this dark, grungy zombie flick. I would actually rank this one way above Army of the Dead, which I actually had positive things to say about. For something a little lighter, they're gonna be adding Richard Linklater's School of Rock, starring Jack Black. This is a fantastic family movie. It does have some potty words in it, so it's not really for kids as young as mine, but if your kids are maybe closer to age 10 and up, this is a really fun movie to watch with them that might also get them interested in music. And then one of my top picks is also a movie I have not seen yet, The Equalizer 3. I was a big fan of the first one. I thought Denzel killed it, and the movie had a lot of clever elements, and then thought the second one was just a wet fart of a sequel. It just didn't even have the same production value. I've heard nothing but good things about Equalizer 3, so I will definitely be watching this one now. Maybe I'll even watch it on New Year's Day. And then the end of my top picks for everything getting added on the first is multiple seasons of Black Sails. This is a pirate drama that originally aired on Stars. It's been out for several years, but fans of shows like Vikings will absolutely love this if you haven't seen it yet. Then some of my not top picks include Aquaman, which is a movie I like but don't love. It's a great time to watch it with the sequel currently out in theaters. They're also gonna be adding the Justice League, kind of rounding out all of the DC movies that they added in December. For horror fans, they're gonna be adding James Wan's weirdest movie, Malignant. It's also his most recent. If you're a fan of weird horror movies, even 80s cult classics, movies like Basket Case, and you somehow skipped Malignant, definitely watch it. It's one of the weirdest things I've seen in a really long time. But I can also see why some people did not like this movie. It is definitely too weird for mass audiences, which I can't believe it came out in theaters the way it did. But again, if you like those weirder, especially like 80s body horror movies, Malignant is gonna be right up your alley. They're adding another James Wan project with Annabelle. They're also gonna be adding The Purge election year and the first Purge, which is actually the last Purge movie to have been released. It being a prequel to all of the Purge movies. But if you need something lighter, they're gonna be adding This Is 40, kind of a fun comedy to watch as a couple. 
They're also adding Mamma Mia 1 and 2, and a musical for the kids with the 1982 original, Annie. And also for the kids, they're gonna be adding Ants, Bruce Almighty, Beethoven, The Croods, and the entire Fockers trilogy. Then, finally, on the first, they're adding You Are What You Eat, a twin study. This is actually a documentary and it examines how their diet over their lifetime has affected their health, which should make for a very interesting watch. Now, as we rapidly approach the end of the year, I've got a recommendation that allow you to cross eating better off of your list with today's sponsor, Factor. Factor lets you skip meal planning, grocery shopping, chopping, prepping, and cleaning with their fresh, never frozen meals delivered to your door. And they're ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat them and enjoy. You can choose from over 35 chef-crafted meals each week that help support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences, whether it's low calorie, vegan and veggie, protein plus, or more wholesome options. For me, it's been really nice having a few meals in the refrigerator to heat up for lunch or dinner when I don't really have anything on hand and I know I'm eating something way healthier than fast food, but the price point is very similar and I don't need to go get in a car and sit in a drive through line. And these meals are delicious. I recently had the spinach and mushroom chicken thighs, which were absolutely delicious and packed with well over 30 grams of protein. And this black pepper and sage pork chop did not look nearly as delicious as it was, but this is something I definitely get again. But the peanut Buddha bowl was by far the most unique thing I had. It was full of quinoa, sweet potato, and peanuts. But they've also got fresh smoothies and protein shakes. I personally loved the cold brew one. It was absolutely delicious. In fact, I haven't had breakfast yet in this chocolate banana protein shake. It's got 18 grams of protein and only six grams of sugar and it's really good, it's like melted ice cream. So head to factor75.com or use the link down below and don't forget to use my code FLICKCONNECTION50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. I am choosy about the sponsors I promote. I only like to recommend things that I actually enjoy. And Factor is something I will be continuing whether they sponsor the show or not. It is just perfect for my lifestyle right now. Again, to get that discount, go to the link in the description. Use my code FLICKCONNECTION50 to save 50% off your first Factor box. But speaking of great stuff, let's talk about everything else Netflix is adding in January. On January 4th, they're adding one of the bigger Netflix original movies to be released this month, Society of the Snow. This is actually about the plane crash where a rugby team had to survive out in the wilderness. It's based on a true story and it's from the same director as The Impossible, the movie about the Indian Ocean tsunami which was just an amazingly realistic movie about survival. So I can't wait to see what he does with Society of the Snow. Also on January 4th, they're adding a new martial arts crime action series starring Michelle Yeoh titled The Brother's Son. This looks like a fun, over the top action martial arts thing with a fair amount of comedy mixed in and some vibrant action. So it looks like my type of thing. On the 6th, they're adding The Florida Project, which is really just kind of a touching indie movie. It stars Willem Dafoe, but there's also a child actor featured in this. It was her first movie, and she got a ton of award nominations out of this thing. So did the film. It's slow-paced, and it's for the art film crowd, but if that's you, this is a beautiful movie. On the 8th, they're adding This Is Us. I would imagine most people into the show already binged it when it was airing on TV, but if you want to rewatch it, they're adding a bunch of seasons. Then on the 12th, they're adding another Kevin Hart action movie titled Lift. In this movie, him and a group of heisters are actually trying to steal a bunch of gold off of a plane. It's silly and the action looks fairly low budget, but it's Kevin Hart and a bunch of the other actors here are pretty good, so it should be a fun, Netflix movie, even if it's not very rewatchable. Then on the 16th, they're adding probably the worst reviewed movie of 2019, Cats. This is not one I've seen, but who knows? I might get to feeling frisky later in January and put this on just for a few laughs. But for some genuine laughs, Dusty Slay has a brand new stand-up special coming to Netflix on the same day. He also has one that's free on YouTube. It's an hour special. He's really funny and does some kind of up-to-date blue-collar humor. If you want to go check out his special, I'll put a link to it. Down in the top pinned comment next to the title of this special, which is also where you can find all of the titles we're discussing, 
They don't work for me in the video description, so be sure to check that top pinned comment to get the full list of everything we're discussing here. Then on the 17th, they're bringing one back to Netflix that I have loved recommending in the past few years, Freaks. This has hopped around on different streaming services and I recommend it every time I see it available somewhere. If you somehow haven't seen it yet based on my recommendations, it'll be back on Netflix on the 17th. This is a weird, twisted, sci-fi sort of supernatural thriller, but even though it's kind of dark and twisted, it's not off-putting. It's surprisingly accessible and it's packed with surprises. This is a movie I've raved about for the past few years. I would love to see a sequel to this thing or a spinoff of some sort, but for now, if you're in the mood for some sci-fi stuff, definitely check out Freaks on the 17th. Then on the 18th, another hidden gem movie I love recommending. It's titled Arkansas. It stars Vince Vaughn as a drug kingpin, and he is amazing in this movie. He's one of my favorite parts of the movie. John Malkovich plays a small town sheriff. He's great. Liam Hemsworth is actually the lead character if there is one in this movie. I think he's an incredibly underrated actor. He kind of lives in the shadow of his big brother, somewhat understandably, but he still is, I think, way better than people give him credit for. Michael Kenneth Williams, it was one of his last roles before he died. And then Clark Duke has a supporting role in this movie. He's insanely funny, but he also wrote and directed this movie as his first big film, and it is a killer crime movie, even though it does have a fair amount of levity to it. A movie that has almost no levity to it is The Good Shepherd. This was actually written and directed by Robert De Niro and is about the founding of the CIA, which is actually something he considers to be a personal hobby. It's something he studied quite a bit. And I'm honestly not a big fan of Robert De Niro's directing style. I think his movies tend to be a little bit too dry for my taste. And while The Good Shepherd is an excellent movie with incredible performances and just really a top-notch production, it still tends to be a little bit too dry for my taste. One that's not dry at all is Cowboys and Aliens, a movie I actually consider to be fairly underrated. I would agree that it falls a little flat in the final act, but the first half of the movie is filled with mystery, it's got a beautiful look to it, and is really kind of almost too cool for school. And then they ultimately drop the ball and it ends up being kind of a half-assed PG-13 movie. But there's also some great performances, not just from Daniel Craig, but Paul Dano's got a great role in this. And then Harrison Ford playing a bad guy is not something he does often. I think he did a great job. Ultimately a beautiful, big budget, fun movie that's just somewhat forgettable. I could say the same thing about The Legend of Tarzan. It's a big, beautiful, expensive looking movie, and it does have some great moments in it. I enjoyed the movie, but it ultimately falls a little flat and is fairly forgettable, mainly because of obvious decisions like Christoph Waltz is the bad guy. He's really just playing the same character you've seen a bunch, which makes it incredibly forgettable, but I still recommend it because ultimately it is still a good Tarzan flick. Now, if you've been enjoying my South Korean recommendations lately, I just recently released a video with 20 movies on Netflix that I recommend from South Korea. They're also adding a new crime series that looks absolutely badass. It's titled The Bequeathed. Based on the trailer, it looks like it's got everything I've loved from all of those crime movies I've been recommending from South Korea. So this is one I will be checking out on the 19th. Also from South Korea, one of my favorite zombie movies of all time, Train to Busan, is coming back to Netflix. This is another one I recommend anytime I see it available anywhere. If you've yet to see it, it is just a dynamite flick, easily one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. On the 25th, they're adding a new series that will definitely appeal to fans of Narcos, but this one stars Sofia Vergara as the drug lord Griselda, who actually held a pretty tight grip on Miami for quite a while. Now, I've never seen her do anything remotely like this, so when I saw this announcement, I was somewhat skeptical. But now that they've been releasing trailers, it looks like she's absolutely killing it in this role. This will probably be one of the most talked about things released on Netflix this month. Then on the 26th, we go back to South Korea for a movie that does not even have a trailer yet, but the concept sounds so interesting. It's called Badland Hunters, and it's about the aftermath of a gigantic earthquake in Seoul, South Korea. But this is from a first time director who has worked on stunts for a lot of South Korean movies I have loved. Movies like The Good, The Bad, and The Weird. So even though they haven't released any footage of this movie yet, 
It's got enough going for it to get me incredibly interested. Then before telling you about everything leaving during the month of January, on the 31st, they're gonna be adding Alexander the Great, a new docu-series about Alexander the Great's rise to power. It looks like a top-notch production and Netflix tends to do well with these docu-series. This has the potential to be better and even more informative than the Oliver Stone flick. Then my last recommendation of the month is a Dutch World War II film that is somewhat recently released that I've yet to see. It's titled Will and it's about the early days of the Nazi occupation. Right now it's got a 7.7 .7 on IMDb which is fairly high and Netflix has been doing a great job with all of their World War II content. Almost all of it. So this is another one I'm looking forward to but here is everything leaving in the month of January. If you're new to the channel, welcome, but please note the date listed is the date that it is gone. That means you need to watch it prior to the date listed. I've also gone ahead and put some of these in bold. These are titles I've strongly recommended over recent videos. Just pause the screen if you need more time, but that is the list. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out their link in the video description. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one.